Let's answer a few questions in relation to the videos that I've put up about the new EU drone rules. This seems to be a topic that you like very much as <laughs> there's a lot of activities below the videos. So I thought it could be really nice just to grab a few of uh, the questions asked and uh, turn them into a video. And if this is a concept that you like, maybe we can do more of those. So the first one is, uh, I bought a DJI Mini 2 SE on December 18th. What do I need to do? Do I need to register it and fix uh, a number on it? How much does it cost and how long until the number expires? There's a lot of questions packed into this, but let's start with the one thing first, what you need to do. To be able to fly the drone, you need to register yourself as a drone operator in one of the 12 member states in the EU. I'm pretty sure it's 12. <laughs> <laughs> but in any of the member states of EU, you should register yourself as a drone operator. As part of that, you will get a drone operator number. That number you need to attach onto the drone. At least in Denmark, it's free to do that uh, part of the process, so that would not cost you anything and it will not expire at any point. And if you buy additional drones along the way, you should just use the same number and paste that on top of uh, the drone in a visible place where it's easy to locate. Be aware, when you uh, get your documentation from uh, the government, there will be a security code included as well. That's a three digit one. You do not want to put that on the drone because then otherwise uh, others can steal your identity. That's your safety that the drone operator ID is uh, yours and nobody else is using it. If you buy a larger drone than 250 grams, you would need that to activate the remote ID on the drone. Which is a segue into the video that I did around the remote ID. Because uh, for those of you that have watched this video saw that I had a hard time figuring out how to enable the remote ID on uh, my Mini 4 Pro. And this is because it's actually not needed. Um, as uh, this gentleman points out, I just needed to go into the EU regulation 219 945, which sort of states the requirements of the different drones to see that it's not included as part of the requirements for a C0 drone. So you can see, if we look over the requirements for the C0 drone, you can see remote ID is not included. But if we go down to the C1 section, the C1 marking of the drone, you can see that there is a section that says that the, a remote identification system is, uh, should be in place. So it's only required for drones from C1 to C4 to have remote ID activated flying in the open category, which is a requirement after 1st of January 2024. All right, so now that is cleared up, then let's go to another one. Hi Henrik, I bought uh, a month ago the Combo Plus version with the extended battery pack. There's no zero label under my Mini 4 Pro. Of course, I don't have the drone here in my hand, but I could imagine that this one was bought in the US because uh, the plus option, the extended battery pack is not available in Europe. And the reason for that is that if you use the plus battery option, the drone will be above 250 grams and will no longer be C0 compliant. So that makes perfectly sense that you can't uh, find a C0 label on your drone, especially if you bought it abroad and maybe brought it back to fly it in Europe. Just be aware that you are forced to fly in the A3 airspace if you uh, decide to fly with the extended battery. If you decide to pick up one of the traditional batteries bringing the weight of the drone below 250 grams, you can of course fly in the A1 airspace along with the other sub 250 gram legacy drones. So even though it seems kind of annoying that you can't find the C0 label on your drone, in real life, it does not mean that much for your, at least for your abilities to where you can fly. My comments also keep getting deleted. Normally, unless you are really rude and uh, I find uh, the, the content that you post uh, on uh, below the video say, uh, yeah, not aligning with what I like, I never delete a comment. So uh, if uh, you experience that a comment is being deleted, it's probably the automated system from YouTube that has detected some sort of wording that you have been using that makes uh, the comment go away. I can usually find those comments uh, reserved for review and it's not always that I get around to look for those all the time. So if a comment is uh, being deleted, then try to rephrase it in a different way. And uh, then of course it will appear below the video. Thanks again, Henrik, for the inside and clear video. I want to confirm if I'm renting a Mini 3 Pro for my trip to Iceland next year, do I need to register myself as a pilot? And where should I look for maps 
of allowed and restricted flight zone areas with the most recent data. Okay, so that's of course an interesting scenario that you're basically living abroad and then you are deciding to travel into one of uh, the EU member states and you want to fly a drone. So you kind of rent it instead of buying it. And because it's a sub 250 gram drone, there's actually not that many uh, things that you need to be aware of. But as we talked about earlier in the video, because the drone has uh, is equipped with a camera, you need to register yourself as a drone operator exactly like you would do if you actually lived in uh, one of the member states. In regards to where you can fly and where you can't fly, it's not easy to give a clear answer to this, but I would recommend that you go to the Icelandic uh, yeah, Aviation Authority website and uh, see if you can find a mapping of uh, where you're allowed to fly and where you're not allowed to fly. In Denmark, for example, we have a um, website that's called dronestoner.dk and that will allow you to type in the address of uh, the locations that you want to visit and in this way you can get a clear view of uh, if the drone uh, not the drone but if the area is not allowed to be flown or not but in general it's always a good idea to check up with the local authorities on the destination that you're going like last year when i went to lorette de mar and brought my mini 3 pro for recording of these really really great shots i had to uh, go to the spanish uh, aviation authorities website and then I got a map similar to the one that I have from Denmark and then I could see where I could actually fly and it was safe to fly along a, sort of the beach line of Lorette de Mar. I do not really recommend these sort of central sites that try to keep an overview of where you can fly or where you can't fly. You need to go to the local authorities and see what is available for this. I know from some of my German friends uh, that there are actually apps available for Germany. So if you're going to Germany, there's an app that will allow you yeah, that you can bring along that will show you where you can allow to fly and where you can't. So maybe one of you from Germany could be so kind and uh, let us know what this app is called in the comments below. So now that's an interesting one. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you too. Uh, I would like to know if you activate the Mini 4 Pro purchased in 2023 as a gift after January 1st, 2024 in the EU, what is the maximum height that appears in the application? 120 or 500 meters. Again, if we take a sneak peek into this uh, EU 219, uh, 945, to see the requirements of the different drones. Uh, because the Mini 4 Pro is a C0 drone, it will be limited from the manufacturer's side to 120 meters in Europe. Many of you kindly replied and sort of corrected me uh, with the remote idea what is mandatory and what is not mandatory. But there's some additional information from uh, one of you guys that I want to share with you. Yes, C0 drones are not mandatory to broadcast remote ID only from C0 and up. We already established that. But you can check with the app Drone Scanner for Android if your drone broadcasts the remote ID but the motors needs to be started. So you can basically download this app that's called Drone Scanner. I haven't tried it yet, but maybe some of you could do that and comment if it works or not. And you will be able to test if your drone is actually broadcasting remote ID. So those were a few of the questions that appeared under the previous videos about the EU drone regulations. All very good questions. There were many, many more, so we could do like a one hour video if I should cover all of them. But if you have some additional questions uh, that you would want me to look into and maybe do a follow up video like this, then make sure to add them below this uh, video. And also, if you missed the two previous videos, uh, one where I show you how to activate the remote ID on and the one where I made an overview of all uh, the rules that are coming into play after January 1st, uh, 2024. I'll make sure to link those through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.